Can you speculate on that a little bit? What do you What do you mean by more under the surface? What would you say is an educated guess on what's happening here? Well, I mean, there there is a, a pretty clear explanation for it. Actually, uh, if we go to the next slide, this is this first chart was basically looking at any address that's not an exchange. But if you start to pair this with some of our exchange clustering heuristics here at CoinMetrics, um, you can begin to see the flow of funds going from mining pools to uh, exchanges like Binance, Coinbase, and Kraken. One weird thing that popped up, however, was a extremely large amount of flows, uh, and in particular from Antpool, 50% of the flows were going to a cluster of addresses that were associated by um, multiple exchanges and service providers. Um, some of the names lumped in there were the exchange Mexi, which is based out of the Seychelles, and then Kobo.com, which is uh, a well-known institutional custodian. And uh, again, just like you saw with that 3BH address, uh, the majority of mining pools are sending their coins to this cluster of Kobo.com affiliated addresses. And even more interesting, it's not like they're just independently sending coins to this address. Uh, they're doing so in a collaborative manner. So on the right here, you see our top cross input transactions. Um, normally, when you see multiple inputs from separate addresses, that implicates those addresses are controlled by a single entity who is orchestrating all of those addresses and joining those coins together. Uh, I don't know that's necessarily the case here, but at the very least, these mining pools, seven out of the top 10, including Antpool, BTC.com, Binance Pool, uh, and a variety of others, are participating in a collaborative transaction process to send their coins to Kobo.com and a variety of other exchanges, including Binance. Um, so you would think uh, based on this and including the fact that Kobo.com also participates in many of these transactions, Kobo.com is potentially playing an active role in consolidating mining pool addresses. Uh, you know, why are they doing this is kind of an open question. A lot of people think maybe all these mining pools are using Kobo.com as a custodian. Um, but one more slide after this, kind of my theory for this, is all of these mining pools are using Kobo.com's loop network. They kind of uh, brand this as an inter-business settlement network uh, for on-chain transfers. You can see some of the names on here line up with uh, some of the names that we have tagged. Kobo.com, Mexi, F2 Pool. So my speculation here is essentially a lot of mining pools have faced some difficulty managing full pay per share payouts. This is where you get rewarded based on the value of your hash rate, regardless of whether or not the mining pool actually finds a block. Uh, my theory is that all of these mining pools are essentially consolidating their liquidity together to offer full pay per share payouts. And uh, all of the mining pool payouts are going through Kobo.com at this point to kind of make sure uh, these mining pools have enough liquidity to compensate their miners. So major point of centralization and concentration, the fact that all the mining pools are funneling their payouts through this entity. Uh, but yeah, we'll open it up and see if you guys have any additional thoughts here. I want to give it first to Charlie, and I'm going to go back to the previous slide. And for those listening, this slide is titled Bitcoin Mining Pool Flows to Exchanges, and it shows issuance and fees going to different pools from Foundry all the way to Poolin, which I don't even know how they still have any flows. And then it goes from the different pools over to different custodians and or exchanges where these miners are likely liquidating their coins, perhaps just holding them on the exchange. But I'll hand it to Charlie. Yeah. I mean, we've seen uh, shenanigans in Bitcoin mining for as, you know, as long as it's existed. Um, I do wonder, like, is the incentive to participate in such a network like the Loop Network really that big to give up uh, block template construction or, you know, point your hash rate somewhere else? I do wonder what, uh, you know, the, the cons why there's consolidation or appears to be consolidation. And um, then I also will make the comment that, you know, it doesn't appear that we actually have any transaction censorship, which is good. 
Um, but it does put us in a precarious position to have that at some point. I'm curious how the market and miners might react if that does become a thing. So just to put it in some different words, this whole scenario we're looking at saying, hey, we know all these pool flows for their coins go to this certain custodian. It's likely that this custodian has a relationship with Ant Pool. And that means that possibly all these pools have some sort of agreement with Ant Pool in place. And now it's like, what is the nature of that relationship that becomes questionable? And so for Charlie, you're digging into is Ant Pool causing these pools to do certain block template construction? Are they limiting transactions? Are they going to limit transactions in the future, whether that be like non standard transactions or that be like inscriptions or even like meta protocols or out of band things like uh, I think like was a core project now? Uh, we're seeing that in block templates or in op returns. We're seeing a lot of interesting stuff now pop up in uh, Bitcoin blocks if you look a bit closely. But we can't, you know, from the outside using public data, you can't really come to a conclusion on some of these things. You can you you can raise speculation, uh, but certainly when we do see like there is some kind of uh, collaboration at the payout level, you do wonder like, well, where does this go and what's actually happening?